Happy Friday, everybody. The 2022-2023 NHL season gets underway today. We've got it all covered for you right here. This and a lot more coming up on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And greetings, everybody. Happy Friday and happy NHL opening day. The season gets started today, and we've got it all covered for you. Uh, I am Gil Martin. You can find me on Twitter at IceWars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. She is Rachel Donner. You can find her on Twitter at R Miriam. And uh, thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Rachel, the season starts now. Are you ready? Are you happy? Are you excited? I am excited. Uh, We've got a game in Prague today, which is such a cool city. Preds and Sharks are playing at the O2 this afternoon. It's kind of weird to have the season start at 2 p.m. Eastern and uh, in the morning and Pacific time for Sharks fans, but uh, it's the way to go with these international games and uh, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be. And I like the international exposure. It, it It's a, a good thing for the sport. It's an exciting thing for a lot of these players. Prague is a beautiful city, as you mentioned. I have been there and it's uh, mm-hmm. I was very, very impressed by it. And it's got a good hockey tradition, too, if you think about it. So uh, sort of a lot of really nice factors coming together. And these two teams will kick off the season before everyone else is finished with the preseason, which is a little strange. You'll see the standings and it'll just be two teams with games. Right. Played. But, uh, you know, again, it'll give the teams time to come back, get used to uh, North American time zones again, and uh, just sort of get everything back into the flow so that they can start the rest of the season on the right foot. But uh, to me, this is something to look forward to. It's a special way to start the season and, uh, you know, something to to watch on a Friday afternoon or morning, depending on where you are in in North America. Uh, I I love it. I love it. Bring it. And uh, so glad the season is finally here. Yeah. And one of my favorite things about the game being in Prague is that, of course, we have an appearance from Yarmir Yager uh, for the festivities. One of my favorite all time players, like what a personality, but also so prolific. And you always just have to think like how much better his numbers would have been if he had stayed in the NHL the whole time uh, of his career. But you know, still trucking, still playing the game when he can, uh, even though he's 50. He said he wanted to play until he was 50. And uh, he's managed to to be able to do that to some degree. Although uh, he did say in interviews leading up to this uh, Global Series game that he's having a harder time getting to the rink and practicing and staying in shape the way that he likes to in order to play at his best. Uh, just because he has so many other commitments, he owns a team over there, and he he mentioned you know having to take care of aging parents and and all of that, and like life is getting in the way <laughs> of him being the hockey player that he is. But he certainly still is that personality, so gotta love it. I always enjoyed you know interviewing Yarmir Yager and watching him play, and look, you know you you mentioned his numbers and how they could have been even better. Seven hundred and sixty six. NHL goals, 1,921 points, and yet, you know, he spent part of the, all of the 2004-2005 season in Europe, went to the KHL for three years, played in Czech, what was then the Czech Republic for one year, uh, and then now has been playing there since 2017-2018. 
just unbelievable that he's still able to do it. And yet sort of a, a, a lesson for all of us that, yeah, life gets in the way. And, you know, even at age 50, he's able to get out on the ice a little bit and play, but uh, other things now sort of taking priority for him. Yeah, but uh, always will be a, a hockey legend in, in whatever arena he shows up. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, watching him play over the years was always uh, great fun and, and or frustrating, depending on what team he was playing for. But, uh, yeah, and like those traveling Yagers that went around yes. to watch him play in the different jerseys. I loved the year he spent on the Flyers was such a a great experience for the fans and uh, we'll always appreciate that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it goes back all the way to, you know, his early time in Pittsburgh and how good he was back then. And, and just, Oh man, when he broke into the league, you knew there was something special already. Hard to believe that was 1990. So we're talking, what, 32 years ago that he broke into the NHL with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, wow. I mean, uh, an unbelievable career, a Hall of Famer in every respect. And uh, the fact that he's still playing in any capacity is pretty incredible. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, and a little extra spice that Yaramir Yager will be there and be a part of everything. And any thoughts about the, the games themselves from Nashville and, and San Jose? Well, you know, San Jose is not projected to do very well this season overall. And you know, the Preds are kind of struggling, I think, to stay in the mix of, of relevant teams that are poised for, a, you know, a strong playoff run. So I think that both teams have a lot to prove going into this series and, you know, the Sharks want to surprise people and the Preds want to show that they can be a dominant force. And, and so they should be pretty competitive, I think. And, and a lot of fun. Um, I, you know, I, I do expect there to be a split between the two games. Uh, I just think that that's the way it has to go, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we shall see, but, uh, I don't know. I, I may just be rooting for the Sharks as an underdog. Oh, there you go. And and the Sharks will officially at least debut their new uniforms, right? So uh, yeah. we will see that. And I, I like them. I think they're sharp. So uh, a, a little extra with the uniforms there. And, and you know, for Nashville, I think their goaltending is going to be such a big key to the season this year for that team. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And it's, it's going to be a huge factor in whether they can win a few extra of those games and, and just get enough points to, to eke into the playoffs, I think. You know, the, their division, I think, is ripe for the picking, so to speak. There, there isn't a ton of super strong teams. There's a lot of solid teams in that division. So uh, I think they do have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, let's see if they can pull it off. The season getting underway today, so happy opening day. It's it's more of a baseball term, I guess, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it's exciting. And it, the off season goes by in a blink. It's unbelievable how uh, brief the NHL off season is. You, you think what was less than three months ago that the Stanley Cup was being uh, awarded? Three, four months ago. So yeah, yeah, uh, less than that. Yeah. But, so. And yet contracts are still being signed yeah. up until the last minute, of course, with uh, Jason Robertson re-signing with the Stars. Yeah. And, and I, I think that was an interesting deal. Were you surprised by the length of the deal? I think that is like the big risk that the Stars are taking with uh, making a bridge deal of it. You know, four years, 7.75 million cap hit for it. And I think that, you know, he'll still be an RFA at the end of it. So the qualifying offer will go up to 9.3 million for that next contract. And the stars have a bunch of other contracts that will be coming off the books at that time. Right. So they should, in theory, have the cap space to reach that. And if he's worth more at that point, pay him the more that he's due, because I think he's worth more than seven point seven five 
this time around, but so it's a team friendly deal. That's for sure. But you you know, scoring 41 goals, 38 assists last year. I mean, that's a monster season that you would think would get rewarded with a much higher deal. But I think that Robertson's taking a little bit of a risk with having that additional cap space down the road to get the bigger payday. And he, he wants to stay with the stars. So here we are. Yeah. I mean, you, you're talking about a combination of some contracts coming off the books for the stars and then obviously the cap going up each year mm-hmm. us last week. So, you know, you, you take 10, $12 million worth of contracts off the book, you add $10 million of cap space roughly in four years, there should be enough money to give him that big mega deal that he's probably looking for. And who knows, in four years, that'll probably be $11 million a season AAV. Yep, could be. Well, we have got a lot more to discuss on today's show. We will look at some of the odds from bet online for each nhl team and we'll talk a little bit more about wrapping up the preseason and some of the big events there but first let's hear about bet online betonline.net is your number one source for all of your football betting needs this season you can find all of the latest player developments team matchup news and podcasts with in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball playoffs, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends in action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Uh, Bet Online has released their odds for teams to win the Stanley Cup and then also to win their respective conferences and divisions. And, you know, these are interesting because uh, the, some of them are, are as you expected, like the Colorado Avalanche, the defending Stanley Cup champions being the favorites at four to one. And yet some of them are, you know, a little head scratching at times. Yeah, it, it is interesting because they've kind of done a switch since the end of last season in terms of, you know, the next four teams and then the four teams after that. And at the end of last season, right when the Stanley Cup is awarded, you know, places put their odds out for the next season and bet online is no different and their next four block of teams at that time were the lightning the hurricanes the wild and the rangers and that made sense to me at that time based on how last season ended and then the next four teams in a block were the leafs the panthers the flames and the oilers now in the time since june to october they've inverted those four teams completely so now Right under the abs, although at much lower odds, I will yes. say, you know, the abs are four to one and the Leafs are 17 to two. Then the Panthers slot in at 11 to one. Calgary's 12 to one. Edmonton is also 12 to one. And then the Lightning are also 12 to one, but they kind of put them below the Flames and Oilers in their list. Um, could be alphabetical, but I, I do think that. Um, it is interesting because I almost would have kept what they did at the end of last season if yeah. I were creating the odds, but I'm not an odds maker. So maybe they know something I don't, but well, Gil, what's your take on, on how like the tier below the abs? Yeah. I would also agree with you that I think the four teams that were there in June when the cup was being awarded belong there more than the four teams that have passed them. The, the factor that may have created some of the change is A, the offseason that these teams had, and B, where the money has been placed since June 20th mm-hmm. when those initial odds came out. But, you know, to me, teams, <coughs> excuse me, te- <coughs> teams like Toronto and Edmonton, I'm still not sold on them defensively. Uh, to win Stanley Cups. So I, I, I'm hesitant 
to place bets on teams like that if I were to place bets. Uh, th those odds don't make as much sense to me. And then Florida, yeah, they won the President's Trophy last year, but boy, there is a lot of turnover on that roster, a lot of changes, a new coach. Uh, they, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised if Florida gets off to a slow start. I think they'll be there by the end of the season. But I think with all the changes going on there, I'm surprised that their odds in, uh, dropped as far as, you know, they, they were more highly regarded than they were in June. Yeah, I think it's similar with the Panthers and Flames, right? There was like an exchange of players there to some yeah, degree this time. off season. And I think it will take some time for both of these teams to get chemistry together, but ultimately they will get there. I think though that at the beginning of the season to make their odds this high. Uh, you, you did mention that, you know, the odds do consider bets already made. And I just wonder if, and uh, don't come at me, but, you know, if Canadians are overvaluing their teams and, and making bets on them early, which is re totally reasonable. But at the same time, if th that could be affecting these odds here, but, uh, you know, at the same time, you know, you have to look at, you know, why are the New York Rangers odds lower, you know, have longer odds than they did before when really they seem like a team that's on the rise. Carolina is projected to win the Metro division, and I just can't see any other team winning the division for that matter. And so why they would drop as well uh, is, is a bit confusing to me. And, you know, I, I might have added Pittsburgh into that mix as well. Um, I think that simply because they'll have the opportunity in the Metro division, I think there are some weaker teams that they could take advantage of and get a better playoff jump uh, in order to make a cup run. And this could be, you know, we say this almost every year, but this could be a last hurrah for them. You know, they <laughs> yeah. have, they have extra motivation to do so. And, and so, you know, I mean, it could be injury risk, you know, obviously we know with Malkin, you never know, but, um, and goaltending has, has always been a oh, question mark yeah. for them, uh, you know, for a while now. So, you know, that could have something to do with it, but I just, I, it just feels like there's something weird in the sauce here. <laughs> Yeah, there is. And, you know, to me, Tampa Bay, a team that, you know, won a few Stanley Cups and then made the final again last year. Uh, you know, the fact that their odds went, you know, down, that people had less faith in them is a little bit surprising because, you know, straight ahead, they are still, yeah, they lost a player or two, but they are still, to me, one of the deepest and most talented teams in the league. And anytime you've got Andre Vasilevsky in goal, you got a chance to to win any game you start and you play in. Uh, to me, them going down to 12 to 1 doesn't make as much sense as uh, some of these other odd listings. So, uh, you know, it's a little surprising to me. Yeah, uh, we should sort of mention a couple of the teams in the middle of the mm -hmm. ranking as well. I, you know, the Kings have moved up which I think is well-deserved. Um, I did watch a little bit of their preseason game uh, last night. That was in Salt Lake City against Vegas. They did lose that one 6-4, to four, but I thought they looked okay. Um, you know, and to have Vegas have better odds than the Kings right now. <clears throat> like, I still don't know that the, the Knights have, like, longevity this season. Yeah. I think it's going to be really tight for them. And so... I think the Kings, honestly, would be a good bet. Um, I think they're one of the teams that could surprise. And then, you know, the Bruins, to me, at 25 to 1, also one of those teams that I think is not being uh, taken as seriously as they should be. I think that, you know, that's not bad odds for them. And the Blues at 40 to 1, uh, to me, also, you know, uh, we've seen Jordan Bennington get hot at the right time, and the Blues still have a lot of talent. Uh, I think their window is still open and 40 to one is, is pretty good odds to, to look at and say, Hey, you know, that's not a, that's not a bad bet. Yeah. Uh, I think that, you know, there are some teams that are going to make significant steps forward this season, but maybe just not get to the point where they even make the playoffs. 
Right. And so that's why I see like their odds getting better. Um, so those are teams like Ottawa, Detroit, Columbus, New Jersey. I think that all of them will have better seasons than they did last year. But at the same time, is it enough to even make the playoffs? I don't know. And that's where, you know, you look at Ottawa and Detroit at 60 to one to win the cup and Columbus and New Jersey at 66 to one. Not bets that I would make to win the cup, but maybe if you're trying to do a side bet on them to win the to make the playoffs, maybe that's money you put down, right? Yeah, maybe that is. And and again, if you want to make that long shot bet, hey, it probably won't pay off. But if it does, I'll do really, really well. Those are <laughs> teams you might want to look into because, uh, like you said, I think they'll be much better. I agree with you on that. And you never know, you know, we saw, for example, last year, the LA Kings, nobody expected them to make the playoffs. They arrived a year early, and I'll put that in air quotes if you want. Uh, you know, maybe Detroit and Ottawa are teams that arrive a year sooner than a lot of people expected, and they make that uh, jump into being a playoff team. So, yeah, there's there's a lot to see and uh, a lot to think about to go over to Bet Online and check out these odds because. Uh, you know, they're interesting and they're thought provoking. I, I uh, you know, we could probably talk about them for a lot longer if we wanted. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's let's take a little break. And when we come back, more to get to on today's show. We'll wrap up the rest of the preseason for everybody. Uh, hard to believe it's coming to a close, but we've got some events coming up this weekend. So we'll talk about that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. So, Rachel, uh, we've got some special events coming up this weekend as we wrap up the preseason. And I love these special events. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of them? So, right, we do have the second half of the Global Series in Prague. So that's Saturday. So they're playing uh, today and Saturday. And uh, like I said, I think they're going to split. So um, we'll see if I'm right. But. Uh, at the same time, on Saturday, we also have the other Craft Hockeyville game. Of course, we had the first one last night in Gander in Newfoundland, where Ottawa beat Montreal. We had a penalty shot goal, which was very exciting. And two new Ottawa Senators in Claude Giroux and Alex Debrinkit connected on the game winner. So... That is pretty exciting for Ottawa. And, you know, I'm sure they always love beating Montreal as well in any environment. Um, the Craft Hockeyville continues with the Sens at Canadians. They're playing in New Brunswick on uh, First Nation territory. So that uh, will be pretty cool to see. I think as well, um, especially so close to, you know, Orange Shirt Day and um, making sure that those you know, First Nations experiences in Canada and the U.S. for that matter are remembered not just on that one day. Um, <clears throat> of course, Monday we have uh, for all the other teams besides San Jose and Nashville, Opening day player rosters are due at 5 p.m. Eastern, so we'll all be uh, anxiously awaiting those mm. final cuts to see who made our team's rosters. And I know for the Flyers, it's going to be kind of a, a crapshoot, but we'll see. <laughs> um, I mean, we know to some degree, but at the same time, um, it's whether or not they'll have a full 23-man roster or not, I think is the bigger question relative to cap space, but uh, there should be some interesting uh, decisions made across the NHL. So look for a lot of frenzied analysis coming up early next week on that. Oh, part. Yeah. And there's always a couple of surprises and players that get placed on waivers and you're like, wait, he's available. And, and how did mm -hmm. that happen? It, it, it does keep you on your toes. And somehow there's always one player who switches teams at the last minute. There's a deal or, or waiver claim or something. So and, and, you know, I remember, for example, I'm going back about 10 years, but the Islanders, uh, you know, ended up getting two important defensemen. They got, you know, Nick Letty, for example, on trades right before opening day to clear up cap space. So, you know, strange things can happen in this modern NHL right before the season starts. And it's always a little 
a little interesting twist. Let's put it that way. Yeah, there always could be. I know the strategy of when you put guys through waivers in terms of do you put it in earlier in the preseason with a whole bunch of guys to maybe hide them in, in there? Or do you wait until the last minute because you really want to you know, see if he can make the cut? Uh, always interesting strategy going into getting the final roster set. And there's always like the LTIR issues and dealing with the cap. It's not just who's the best player. It's do we have the money? So uh, that's where you would have the... to claim on who would you have to bring back by putting them on mm -hmm. waivers. And, and, you know, if they're out of options, maybe you keep them on the team where another player who may be better still doesn't need to clear waivers to come back up if you bring them down. So, yeah, there's a lot that goes into these decisions and uh, always some moves, uh, you know, and like I said, it's an exciting time. All 32 teams ready to start the season. And uh, wow, we, we got through the off season. It's It's time to start hockey again. And I'm ready to go. Yeah. And of course, the first uh, regular season games over here uh, start next Tuesday. So we've got the Bolts versus the Rangers which should be really exciting since that's a playoff rematch and uh, the Kings are playing Vegas. So it uh, should be a fun night of hockey to kick it off in North America in our time zone. But yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Uh, should be a, a, a really fun season. Absolutely. Well, Rachel, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to do the Friday show with you and uh, thank everybody for watching and listening to Locked On NHL. That's going to do it for us today. I'll be back Monday with three of our local experts talking about the biggest stories from around the league. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And thanks for listening to the Locked On NHL podcast.